Hey everyone, welcome to Retaliatory Strike. Today we have a game between myself, Ryan, playing Legion of Everblight, and Bob playing Mercenaries. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. Today I'm running a 75 point list in Oracles of Annihilation. So I have Callus 1 with an Angelius, a Carnivian, a Seraph, and a Succubus for a battle group. For solos, I have a Primal Archon, I have three Spell Martyrs, and two uh, Forsaken for my Fury Management. And for units, I have the Boil Master and Spirit Cauldron for creating corpses and handing it out. I have two units of the Gatorman Bokor and Bogtrog Swamp Shamblers for hopefully lots of recursion and a really good jam unit to get in the way of other stuff. And then I have a maximum unit of Gatorman Posse for a little bit more beef to my list here. And then I have a maximum spawning vessel unit, and that's just to get me some uh, lesser war beasts uh, to, for scoring, hopefully, and some extra corpse collection. I want to make sure that I cover everything up with uh, some corpse collection. <clears throat> so. This list kind of came together after talking to Bob because my original list was Hellmouths and Raptors and all the Legion units that I own. And he kind of said that he was getting sick of fighting those so much. And I said, well, you know, I own a bunch of minion stuff. Why don't I try this theme that I've never tried before? And I created this list. So uh, I hope it uh, works out fairly good and everyone enjoys the game. Hi everyone, I'm Bob, and today I'm playing Mercenaries in the Irregulars theme, which gives flank to Marshall Warjacks, a re-roll on starting roll, and I guess about it. So yeah, we have Gordon and his two drillers to be the hard punchers. We have two gunners because they are good shooters. We have Reinhold for lucky charm on Gordon when he goes to double barrel attack, or uh, give him an additional one so he can shoot three times. We've got Cal Baluk for the shooting. We've got uh, Rowlock, Morclaw, and a Rover. And we've got Thor and a Avalanche here. So we got, we got two Marshall Jacks in there. We have Alexia and her Thralls. We have the Crow's Cutthroats and the Idrian Skirmishers. Uh, my intent here is to have Alexia hanging up behind the Idrian Skirmishers to start picking them up when they start dying. They make more and more solos for me, which can be good on some scoring scenarios. Uh, I find the Avalancher usually only wants to make one big shot with its gun anyway, so having Thor tune it up to make its one big shot is pretty good. We're just looking for that knockdown mostly. Relic and the Rover give me a reasonably good heavy hitter with flank enabled. They should be able to really smash into an enemy heavy pretty good. Gobber Tinker for doing some repairs, why not? Yeah, um, oh, the other thing too is, you know, sometimes Reinhold's ability to drop stealth can be good. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's my list. Deployment. So I won the roll off and chose side. And then Bob did his deployment first. So yeah, I don't have anything too crazy I'm thinking about here. I know the Crows and the Idrians of Pathfinder, so I might be able to, and Repo. So I might be able to dart in and out of the forests and shoot. So I'm kind of thinking I might do that when I do my advanced deploy. But I have Gordon and his jack sitting up near the bottom, because he's slow, <laughs> and they're going to go try to hold down that bottom zone, and I'm going to rely on my units to do stuff around the top area, mostly. I want Alexia backing up the Idrians so as they start dying, she can start bringing them in as skeletons is the plan. I also have Relic and the Rover up the top because I want something that can hit hard to back up the Indians in case there's a heavy hitter in there. And I'll be relying partly on the theme benefit of having flank warrior model for Marshall Jax to help that rover do a lot of work. And yeah, nothing too well. I think it's worth pointing out the corpse collection in this matchup. I have Alexia's unit collecting corpses out to nine inches and Ryan has the two units of Bokor and Shamblers collecting corpses, and also the Crockpot collecting and making corpses, 
and the spawning Sp- vessel. Spawning vessel. Uh, also collecting corpses. So there's a lot, there, and there's a lot of troops on the table. So there's a pretty stiff competition for all the corpse collection going on. For my deployment here, I'm just trying to decide where all these troops are going to go. I know that I want to do my uh, sh- a shambler unit on the top and bottom because they're great jam unit. Uh, other than that, I'm putting mostly my beasts right up the middle. And I'm doing the primal archon up top to support the top zone there. And then I'm going to have the Gatorman Posse on the bottom to support the B- Bokor unit that I'm placing right there uh, later. <clears throat> Other than that, it's just trying to fit all the bodies in. And then I have three of the Spell Martyrs, which I'm putting in behind. So if I want to cycle Ignite or something somewhere, I'll be able to. And then my Forsaken, I am just putting in in behind some beasts so they can help with Fury management, which will be great for me. And then the Succubus is just in right next to Callus because I want the free upkeep. So there is my Gatorman Posse there, and then just all of my uh, soup kitchen workers going in behind the spawning vessel and then it goes into bob's advanced deploy so yeah so seeing where all the troops and all the beasts are lined up i don't quite do it as originally planning but i do wind up having the crows on the bottom here and i do kind of want them to play around the forest a little bit and i plan on running them real hard to try and flank around that side and maybe i'll be able to start sneaking in some some backstab enabled crossbow shots because that's always really cool so i put them there uh, and I'm thinking I'm going to have them put Prey up on that blue unit of Posse, because that's most likely what wants from Storm and straight across at them. So make me a little more effective against them. And then I start parking my Adrian Skirmishers there at the uh, across the top. You put Kyle Baylock kind of right in the middle. Oh, yes, Kyle Baylock is in the middle there. So I kind of was thinking, like, going into the cloud would be good to get his Prowl to turn into Stealth. But then it's like, all right, it's Legion stuff. <laughs> which is out of sight so they can't eat so i was like maybe i can hide behind the cloud no i can't hide behind the cloud because like <laughs> out of sight so yeah i was originally thinking of using the cloud for kel but that doesn't work so good against the legion so the crow's cutthroats prayed the gatorman posse and the idrians prayed my primal archon and that is deployment mercenaries turn one all right so lay out my focus no big deal Looking at what I want to do, I'm thinking I definitely want to flank hard with the Indians and flank hard with the uh, Crows. Oh, I'm checking to see what an Assault Spray from the Carnivian is. That's the little token I marked down. And it's frightening,ly far. Um, I will, I'll put a couple guys in range for that just to see if I can bait it out. Or like, I'm not too worried if he wants to roast one or two guys. I just don't want to line up a whole shitload for him to roast all at once. <laughs> so I line a few up. I keep Cal back so you can't get roasted because that would be awkward. Yeah, like I, said, I talked about the deployment. I, I can't use his stealth to protect him at all. I decided to have Alexia walk up and turn a zombie into a thrall. And I sh- thought about running her to get right in tight to the Indians, but I figured, you know, I'm just going to start churning out some thralls. Why not? Uh, trample and repo with the avalanche. And then I just run the rest of the jacks. For a minute there, I forgot that I wasn't in uh, Hammer Strike where all my heavies are repo. <laughs> just Thor. Um, what else am I doing here? Moving up. Oh, that's Gordon. Gordon put his upkeeps out and then charged. So he's got solid ground on himself. And he's got Strength of Granite on one of his drillers. And that's it. So I'm just running everything else up. Crows run up to hang out behind the trees, hoping to maybe pull off some shenanigans. And that is my t- Oh, R- Ralph and the Rover run up. Legion, turn one. So, turn one is probably going to just be a lot of running, as I can't really reach anything that I want to with anything. So I decide, I'm seeing if I can get a spray off and 
catch multiple models, but it looks like uh, I can't. So I put up spiny growth and then I charge and I boost and I remove one of the Idrian skirmishers. And then I go with my primal archon and I'm beelining for the bottom of the board because I want to get away from the, pr the people that prayed. I then move up a uh, Forsaken and pull the uh, three Fury off of the Carnivian. So that's good there. And then I just walk up with Callus after casting Slipstream. And then he... And then from there, I'm trying to figure out if I can get uh, a shot with my Seraph on the Thrall, and I can't, so I slipstream with the Seraph and just move up behind the Force. And I was gonna slipstream the Primal Archon forward, but it does say friendly faction only, so I can't do it to any of my minions models. There, I just moved up my Angelius, and I'm making sure that that Thrall can't see it. And I riled and ran with that. And then I'm just running up with these Shamblers. I And I'm just running up the Shamblers to gum up the works there. I'm wanting to make sure that um, not a lot of stuff would, would be able to get to my beasts if anything could. And then I'm just running up the top unit of shamblers to try to do the same thing even though the carnivian is a little bit far to the side for doing what i want to do but that's okay i move up the crock pot and i make two corpses which i then hand out immediately to the bokor up top and then i'm just moving up the spawning vessel and all my support and that is Pretty much my turn here, other than I move up my succubus and then I'm running those that gainer and posse up to the top there to get away from their the people praying them. Mercenaries, turn two. Okay. So we power up, we pay to upkeep solid ground and strength the granite, which leaves Gordon on a whopping three focus do stuff with <laughs> i have Tor thor move up and tune up the avalanche here because i know that's it's it's in range to shoot at lots of things so it's definitely gonna want to shoot this turn all tuned up so that's all set up then i'm actually starting to think about what i'm actually going to try to do this turn so I'm like well i know this is happening i'm in range of the four arm four winged duty and jellius seraph the seraph so I crank that big hit. It hits him. He can't be knocked down because he's serpentine, but it does knock down Callus and do some damage and knock Callus down. There's a little token going out, and I think I might clip another Shambler into that too. Maybe I don't know. But the big thing is I knocked down Callus and did some damage to the Seraph, and then I reload back a little bit. Now I have my gun bunny go up, and it cranks a shot at the Seraph. I'm thinking maybe I can nuke the Seraph and get rid of some of his movement shenanigans. So we hit him pretty good. So that's real softened up. I have this one move up, and then find out I can't reach the Seraph. So I try shot at the Angelius, and I miss. Because they look death 14? It's not bad. Uh, what else am I doing here? I have Crow's Cutthroats go. So yeah, their prey target is creeping away from them, but I could shoot at some shamblers. Uh, I'm only rat 5, power 10 with them. They're not against their prey target, but shamblers don't have great defensive stats either, so it should work out okay. So I go and rattle off some crossbow shots, start hitting them and killing them off. I do miss a couple and fail to break armor on a couple of these attacks. <laughs> like, there's a few times I'm either missing or not killing is a, it's a little sad <laughs> but we do kill off the couple ones i can reach which is good <laughs> and then i use their massive five inch repo to keep most of them pretty safe behind the woods and so they're skirmishing so they're doing their job i run up my drillers so this flank is almost all done i'm just looking at what i can reach with gorton because i'm like well if i walk up 
my four, my blistering four inches, I can reach uh, the Angelius, and I could try a dual hand cannon shot with them. So I had Reinhold give him Lucky Charm, so if I miss or if I whiff damage, I can re-roll it, which is helpful. I give the big both barrels attack, and roll it, and I roll pretty good, and do massive damage. <laughs> that was deadly. Um, although now I'm uh, within 12 inches of an Angelius, which is probably not very smart of me. I have... Is this Kel now, I think? Yeah, yeah. Kel is aiming and using dual shot to plink six points of damage into the Carnivian. Instead of trying to break its armor 20, I just tell you, yeah, I'm just going to flex <laughs> some damage. That's cool. I look and see the rovers in range to move up and try a shot. So I have it go up and try a shot at the Carnivian. I like, it's miss. <laughs> it was sad. But... Uh, Defense 12 is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, look at you. It's a cool CID. <laughs> so anyways, now I'm looking at what the Idrian skirmishers can do. So I have them walk up pretty good. There's, I can get two of them in range to shoot at Knockdown Callus. And I can get a couple of guys to try to shoot like Adam and Bokor. Because if I can get rid of that Bokor, that'll give me a big edge and clean up the side so they go and start rattling some shots in a second here. So yeah, the guys who are behind the house shoot at some shamblers. They hit and kill them pretty easy. The other guys, there's the one shooting at Callus, and we chip a little bit of damage at Callus. I wasn't tracking at this point that he just regenerates health, so it's probably not going to stick around super long, but seemed like a thing to do. I have a, a couple guys do a CRA into the Bokor, who tanks some of that damage and then crumbles a Shambler or two to stay alive. And then I have a couple more guys do a CRA into the Bokor again. They're like, die! And he crumbles more Shamblers and stays alive. <laughs> so he's taking some pretty big hits, but uh, staying in the game. We oh, yeah, read the rules, and the spawning vessel can actually collect those corpses. So, so the spawning vessel is all loaded up full of dead Shamblers now. <laughs> and I have the guys repo a little bit just to keep the Carnivian engaged with something for him to clear out and to contest zones and try to be annoying. I... I should have maybe did their mini feet to have cover. I should have had them go to ground, maybe. We have. I didn't think of that till later. I don't have a lot of shooting on yeah. that side. Anyways. Well, you, you do relatively, I think, could do a range thing on later. But Alexia moves up, makes a skeleton to go score the flag for me. Ralok hangs out trying to stay alive in the back. <laughs> and the Thrall was up. That's uh, pretty much my turn. Oh, I'm going to move uh, Gobber Tinker in run range of the flag. Legion, turn two. All right, so I leech in all my fury and I bring up the two shamblers that my boker can make. And then I start my turn here. So I move up with my forsaken and I use the three off of the forsaken to blight burst to try to clear out uh, some of the models here. And then I'm just checking for corpse collection range and whatnot so alexia and my pots and boker are all in there but my stuff's closer so i get the corpses <laughs> uh which is great for me so i i cleared out the jam on the carnivian which is great for me uh from here i am going with my bokor and shamblers so i move up uh the Three and the two do a combined melee onto the one, gets a corpse for the boker and the other one misses. And then what I'm doing here is I'm doing the hand of glory or whatever it's called, where it's stationary as a model. And I'm going to stationary his leader model and I killed a shambler to boost the to hit on that. So I got that to land. So now he can't give out orders, have fun with no mini feet. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> what a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> and then after that, I'm going with the bottom unit of Shamblers. I'm doing the run charge order, and I'm connecting one charge onto the gun bunny. And the rest of them are just running. So uh, I 
I roll this, and I don't think I even scraped any damage in with the charge. And then I see that I missed a Shambler, and Bob is nice enough to let me moot run him up. After that, I am going with Callus, who is healing uh, all the crippled aspects from the Seraph and the Angelius. He then puts up Ignite on the Angelius. And then he is just going to walk and hide behind that forest. Because I think he's fairly safe there. After that, I am going with my Angelius, who is going to charge the gun bunny there. So he pays one to charge. And then I'm going to boost to hit because... Or <laughs> don't want to miss. And then I one shot the gun yeah. bunny. It was armor piercing yeah. tail, tail attack. Just kills it. Yeah. Like I think it's POW 16 with Ignite. <laughs> Gross. Uh, so he does that and then he sidesteps back a little bit. I run the martyr onto the flag and then the Forsaken I keep in the cloud and pull the Fury off the Angelius. And then I go with the Seraph and I can get shots onto Alexia here. So I roll up some shots and I get lucky and I get three. My first shot, I go after the Skelling, the solo, kill him. I shoot at Alexia, I boost to hit and he shield guards. And then I take my last shot at Alexia and I boost to hit and I miss. So now I have to plan out another way to kill Alexia. So I'm going with the Carnivian here, and I can get it lined up where I hit an Idrian, the Rover, and Alexia. So I charge in, miss the Idrian, hit the Rover, and then I hit Alexia as well, which yeah, even... Boosts the attack yeah. and the damage into her. Yeah. And I can't even crumble enough skeletons to keep her alive. So she just dies. So she dies, and we let all the skeletons there stay. Stay. I'm going to token <laughs> down to mark who the new leader is because they have command of range of three. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the Carnavian finishes eating the Idrian that he charged and gives the corpse to the Bokor. I move up the Sarah or the. Succubus and put a cloud on to the Angelius and then I run up the Primal Archon to hopefully have counter charge and shadow bind be a deep bigger deal. I then move up my uh, soup kitchen there and create a Harrier and because it looks like the Carnivian is still in the zone a little bit but where the proxy base where I proxied it out was wasn't in the zone. So I use that Harrier to move over to capture that zone. I then move up the pot and I get three more corpses, which I give to the bottom Bokor, which now has seven. And then I run the Gatorman Posse. Mercenaries, turn three. Okay, well, this is going to be a crazy turn. So Ryan actually feeded last turn because it's only going to affect a couple of bottles, but it's relevant. Uh, I pay for my upkeeps. And think about allocating focus, but I don't. Because I think I can do what I want to do with minimal focus input from Gordon. I think it's going to be my feet turn. So I have Gordon slog his way two inches into the rubble and pop my feet. And it's going to catch callus and most of the stuff on the bottom edge of the table that's near me. So I, the uh, Primal Archon cannot be pushed. So it makes a good backstop for me to push the... Angelius and the Bokor into, and then I shove some uh, Bokor into the woods. I shove a couple of guys into each other, so they're all bunched up real nice. I think that's like one AoE or one trample could clear out a whole pile of them. And then I have the other guy slide off a bit too, I think. Um, and then I'm looking at uh, what's his name? Callus got shoved over into the Bokor. Okay, so did my feet. It means my feet means his defense is lower, which helps count the fact that his feet makes his defense higher on Callus. I have Gordon crank a hand cannon shot into the Gatorman Bokor, who dies because the amount of damage I inflicted was enough that crumbling his skeletons would keep him alive. So he just died. 
And there we are. So I've boosted damage, maybe attack also. So I'm still sitting on two focus anyways. Um, I should. I realized I should have had Reinhold go Lucky Charm, but, but I didn't. <laughs> but it's fine because I have to move him later. I have Thor go up and tune up my Avalanche. Now, tempting as these guys are close to me, I'm thinking my, jack, my drillers and gunners can probably clean up what's close to me. So I have the Avalanche go and shoot at the spawning vessel. I hit it and almost kill it, but don't quite because it didn't really roll super good. I do kill a bunch of the spawning vessel dudes who then fall into the pot. <laughs> so I fueled up this pot for him. It's great. Uh, then I use my repo to straddle the two zones. Why not? Uh, okay. So that didn't go quite as stellar as I was hoping, but it's not awful. And then I have Kel aim and dual shot. Shoot two shots into the <coughs> Carnivian, soften it up. I'm trying to make it easier for my rover to finish off. Because he has spiny growth up, and I hate punching stuff to the spiny growth. So I'm trying to minimize how much he can do with that. I have my uh, Risen Thralls charge in. One, I think just one, makes attack at the Seraph and misses. The other ones are just in position. One of them providing a flag trigger for my rover is the goal so that all being done what do i look at now looking at my adrian's a little bit yeah so i have my adrian's move up they can't give orders because the officer is frozen so they can't charge anything or they can't use their mini feet or anything cool like that but they move up and they stab at some jamblers and they shoot at the spell martyr behind the house uh, some of these guys are killing. I think he's measuring to see if it goes into any pots. Might. Um, these ones are shooting up the spell martyr now. This turn, I forget they have repo, and I should have had the guys who have the house repo up to tow the zone, but I don't. I should have been trying more people into the zone, so he wouldn't score it so easy. And this is us just putting out corrosion tokens. Oh yes, because of Ryan's theme benefit. If I end my turn near. Blighted dudes and all minion guys count as blighted dudes. I uh, get corroded, so there's a lot of corrosion tokens going to my guys, which isn't great. <laughs> um, here's the rover going in, start to chop in on the Carnivian, and that's a little rough. <laughs> so I think he just walked up and used a crush order, and I, I forget to apply the damage, but it winds up being close. Like it doesn't really matter. I do wind up powering through. The rover takes a bit of damage doing it, but it's nothing critical. I charge in the... What's his name? Solo. The Solo, the, the Warrior Thrall. I think I miss. Anyway, I have Relic set up to score that flag, so that's good. And then I'm like, well, I should probably do some more work with what's going on down here. Uh, so my feat means his defense is lower. It also means uh, his guys can't run or charge or any shenanigans like that. So I'm pretty safe from getting hit by guys that I did this to. I trample a driller and squish a whole bunch of shamblers, so that's good. And then I get corroded and shadowbound. And then I have a gun bunny go up and shoot at the primal archon, do some damage to it, which is happening right now. And I was kind of hoping to kill it so I wouldn't get my other jack shadow bound because it's super annoying like if you just end moving them three inches of it you just get shadow bound but i have to charge it in while the strength of granite it hits it and just pastes it and in hindsight maybe i could have just charged it and hit it and pasted it but i wasn't sure so i i used the gun too i just have my dropper tinker move up a little bit and then i said uh oh this is the crows now Crow's moving up. They're going to try some shots at that spell martyr that's on the flag and the Forsaken that's in the cloud. It's going to be a long shot to hit either of them, but they're going to try. Oh, first they knife the one Shambler is in the woods, and that works out okay. So now they're trying some shots at the spell martyr. They do kill it, and he makes Incubi because it's his feet turn. So every time I kill a Legion dude, it turns into an Incubi. That's our Incubi proxy. I decide to carry on shooting at the Forsaken, 
Oh, because the Incubi will have crazy high defense on your feet turn, which makes it very unlikely to hit. Um, not that I'm super likely to hit the Forsaken either. So I try <laughs> lots of shots that don't hit anyone. And I repo to spread out enough so you can't kill all of me all one go. And I have Reinhold move up, and that is my turn. Legion, turn three. So I have a bunch of... Uh, or seven shamblers up at the top there that I'm get it that I'm creating. So I start popping them in behind uh, Adrian skirmishers and the like there. So then I can get some back strikes, make them a little bit better at melee. So I got seven shamblers from that there, which is great for me. So that flank's not looking as broken. I leech in all the fury. I had to take a point of damage to get up to the six, and then I upkept Ignite on the Angelius. Here I'm just seeing if there's any way to get more than uh, three, or more than two Crow's Cutthroats, and I can't, so I just move up and Blight Burst, and I end up killing both of them. After that, I am just looking through this to see the stats on the Incubi. I haven't really used them before. So he charges into Crow's Cutthroat and finishes them off fairly easy. After that, I am going with that top Forsaken who's moving up and clearing out that Seraph from the one Risen. So I get behind the Risen and attack and kill it easy peasy. I then move up my soup kitchen and make another Harrier. So while I still have the unit. After that, I go with the top unit of Bokor and Shamblers who are killing Idrians and giving their corpses to the Bokor, which is great for me. I ended up killing his commander there so now the model that's engaged with the boker is the new unit leader who then who is he's gonna stationary again so he can't give orders because that's my favorite <laughs> and i killed a shambler to boost just to make sure that it would work uh, after that i just move up the harriers to contest uh both zone uh, both zones there and then i move up with the seraph making sure that he's within 12 and not engaged <clears throat> and then i roll up some shots i get two shots this time i boost to hit uh i'm going after relic he's engaged in melee Who, yeah he's engaged in melee so he's hard to hit but so I missed the first one, hit with the second one, boosted damage, and ended up pulling him off the board, which is great for me. I can't make tough rolls. <laughs> and then I go with the crockpot who hands out four corpses to the boker there, and then uses the fifth corpse that was on it to boost a spectral lash into one of the Idrian skirmishers behind the house there which hits and immediately yanks that skirmisher into the pot. So he's on one corpse now. And here I am just figuring out uh, where my posse can get to. So I can get into the one of them onto the rover so they get the run charge order and they pray for rerolls and they're going in here. And I do a little bit of damage to the rover like they don't hit crazy hard but it's meat that he has to chew through next turn at least so i end up killing uh, at least one more skirmisher which goes gives its corpse to the boker so i'm almost back up to seven corpses again <laughs> oh i forgot to mention last turn when the primal archon died i had the Adrian switch their prey target to that bokor unit because there is a prey token there. I kind of forgot to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, here I'm just going with the Angelius, getting in as close as I can. And I do my armor piercing. I hit, I boost damage, crank in uh, some pretty decent damage. And then I am buying attacks and boosting damage. Uh, 
where I can, and I get it pretty close to dead there. It looks like it's only got about six boxes left. So <clears throat> I'm wanting to get Callus back because uh, he's in a pretty dangerous spot. So I go with him and I start just doing flashing blades here. So I flashing blades the driller to death, which is great. And then I move my three inches back to hopefully a little bit safer area. And that is my turn. Mercenaries, turn four. <laughs> okay. So we see if corrosion goes out on a few guys. It does on one or two. It goes out on the rover. It's pretty nice. It's like I lost Adrian from corrosion. It wasn't too bad. Okay. I do pay to upkeep strength of granite. I do allocate one more focus to this guy just to make sure I can kill that uh, Angelius. I'm looking at what I can do. I got lots of dudes I can fight. So, okay, so the driller walks up. I got boost to hit the the big uh, drill. I do a bunch of damage, leave on one box. The fist hits him and just kills him. Cool. So that's good. Um, so I guess I over allocated, but I was counting on maybe having to do one more attack. If the fist hadn't hit, I think I would have needed to with the sustained attack. So I'm trying to see if I can clear up the avalancher. So Gordon can just make the charge to get in there and reach. He only has half inch reach, which I think is criminal. But anyways, he has half inch reach. I do go in, I boost to hit. I do get the critical, so critical smite. I smite him a whole one inch away. <laughs> so just back, knocks him down. Then we roll up the damage. And I just obliterate him, so I paste him. That's good. Well, I've freed up the Avalanche now, but I can't reach him to tune him up with Thor because Gordon and the Rough Terrain are in the way. But that's okay. He doesn't always need to be tuned up every turn, I guess. So he just aims and shoots at Callus and knocks him down again. And I think does a little bit of damage. Nothing too crazy. Well, I, I had to transfer you, it, and you did about 11 points. Oh, he does do pretty good. Yeah, he transfers it all. Yeah, he does actually do some real damage there. And then I repo him up a little. Why not? Keep him within three inches of Gordon to shield guard for him, in case that becomes relevant. And I move up the gunner, and I do a shot into the pot and just kill it. And then maybe I should have shot Dallas, but I was thinking with all those transfers he had available, he'd probably stay alive. And I don't know, that pot was annoying me, so I killed it. I move up crows who do get behind some guys, so we get some backstab enabled attacks, and which is great because now they're rolling lots of dice and they're just wiping everything out. But then the one shot in the front at the spell martyr kills them. And I do the repo, so I'm trying to threaten the backside of uh, Callus a little bit. I run my Tinker onto the flag for scoring. I run Thor up, I run. Reinhold up a little bit, but yeah, that's that flank's looking pretty good. I don't think Callus can get to Garden, so he should be okay over there. Now I'm going up here. I have Cal Balak aim and shoot. I don't think he did too crazy, but he's been aiming and shooting every turn, <laughs> so he's been he's in a good spot, I guess. I have my Idrians, and I forgot a couple of Idrians alive behind that house, so the Idrians come creeping on out and they start slamming shots into the Bokor guy who's their prey target. He crumbles some. Um, uh, shamblers to stay alive. I can't do a try shot into the pot and do like nothing to it. <laughs> I don't think he even tried because the pot's like armor 18. Oh yeah, I think I thought about it, but yeah, we wound up shooting at the Bokor a lot. He crumbles the shamblers. He's still alive and he has like a million corpses, <laughs> but he's he's there. And I repo the like I did him a little deeper into the zone. Why not? <clears throat> I move up some of my risen. And I try clawing at something as we hide behind that uh, tree and do nothing. I move up the rover. To oh, start... the Forsaken was the there. The Forsaken was there, yeah. They couldn't get her. Move up the rover and start chopping at the Seraph and wipe him out. And I might have, like, one more attack to throw at a gator. Can't remember if it does anything. Oh, you're all tough. You know, it's a... or it's Shambler who dies there, I guess. All right. No, that was a gator. That was a gator. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, not too bad. Um, you scored two points. Yeah. 
Legion, turn four. So I make, I think, seven more <laughs> uh, shamblers there, which uh, pop in and rise up around all of the Idrian skirmishers there, because I'm hoping that I can finally finish off this unit. Uh, I stand up Callus there, so he can now at least move. And then I start going with the Boker up top there, who starts trying to finish off all of the Shambler, or all of the Idrian skirmishers. And I kill the two that popped out from behind the house, and then that third one is just, he's being a champ, surrounded by zombies, and giant gator men. And I can't seem to kill him. <laughs> I think they actually hit him and don't break armor one time. Just yeah. Uh, and then I'm going with my Gainerman posse here. So I'm sending the leader into that guy. I'm praying for rerolls. So he's definitely dead now. I know it. I can just feel it. And the rest of the posse start lining up here to try to keep people jammed out of the zone. So I can keep scoring. Do some damage to a rover. Yep. I, I hit the rover and crank some good damage in. And then my... Killed some of the zombies there, <clears throat> which is great. And then the guy into that last Idrian whiffs on both attack rolls. Yeah. So I move up with my pot and I boost to hit a spectral lash at him and miss as well. And then I hand the corpses, o the rest of the corpses over to the Boker. So he's sitting on about five more corpses now. <laughs> And then I'm going to go with Callus, who is going to kill a Risen, and then he casts an Eruption. So Alexia is dead, so now I can target them with magic. So I cast an Eruption, and I kill another Risen, and <laughs> that's pretty much my turn there. Oh, the oh and then, yeah, Callus heals every, every activation, too. Mercenaries, turn five. Okay, so I paid for my two upkeeps, and I don't allocate to my driller because he's not going to reach anyone. And I don't allocate to my gunner because one's enough. Uh, Thor tunes up the Avalancher, who can see Callus, so he just aims and boosts. It's all boosted, so he hits. He cranks massive damage in. Callus can't take it all, so he has to transfer it to his new little Harrier buddy. His Harrier explodes into big pink mist, and Cal still takes up as slow damage and is almost dead. The pot collects the dead Harrier. <laughs> uh, repo up. And then I just walk up the gunner and shoot the knockdown Callus, and it just kills him. Afterthoughts. So, you managed to pull out a win. Yeah, I mean, this is a cool one. But I mean, when we first were setting up to play, I built the list because I'd seen, I'd been inspired by a list I saw where Gordon had these like independent elements in his army that operated without him because he doesn't really get the focus to fuel anything up. So you kind of, he's there for the, for a big scary feat and a really punchy battle group if you come into him first. Um, and that's kind of all he's really got. And rock walls means maybe it's a little harder to kill. But I never did really cast that. But the the, the everything operating independently is supposed to be the big threat. And so the list I saw had the super juniors in it, which makes <laughs> it super dangerous. I don't have those guys, so I just thought it'd be cool to try to run some of these units and Marshall Jacks, since you know the theme benefit is Marshall Jacks get awesome with flank. Um, but it wasn't a super tuned awesome list, which worked out well since it, what you decide. To not play your better list, and you looked at this Oracles of War because you don't play or Oracles of Annihilation. Oracles of Annihilation. Because I haven't played them that much, and w when we first looked at them, I went, "Holy shit! I'm gonna make a ton of Incubi on my feet turn because I read it as just friendly models, not friendly faction. Like they they like split it up weird in the wording." And then, and then it also says living too, so I couldn't even turn all my shamblers in. And after we realized we realized that, 
I know you were like, do you want to maybe not play that? And I was like, nah, I'm going to try it out. Like, like the feat's going to mostly just be for Callus to have extra defense. <laughs> so, yeah. So it wasn't a very optimized list for you, which, you know, is a little rough. But it worked out not bad. I, I think in the end, us talking to each other and being like, this is kind of the type of game that we want was like a huge benefit because like this was this game was actually crazy fun to play. Oh yeah, like and, not, so neither list was super optimal. Yeah. But it was still really cool. Yeah, it was <laughs> it like if if I had come with like my raptors and my hellmouth and what I was originally going to bring, I, I feel like it would probably would have been a lot more one-sided. <laughs> it probably would have got gross for me. Because between the Raptors' long range and... And their massive repo, too. Yeah. Like, it's hard to touch them if they don't want to get touched. And possibly being able to pull out... Uh, or I guess they can't be pulled, the the Dwarf Jacks, eh? No, Dwarf Jacks yeah, don't so get pulled. I guess they're safe from a Hellmouth, but yeah. that, they, they get caught up on one pretty... They hung up on still. Yeah. They're annoying. Um, we we did talk a little bit there about uh, possibly getting Alton Ashley into the list mm. as well because we were saying like between Kale Baylock and Alton Ashley, it's a lot of sniper could, damage. Yeah, you can put like close to twelve points of damage mm. into Beast mm. every turn, which, which is, is pretty nasty. Yeah, Kel didn't work that game. He parked himself and then he just aimed all game, getting two shots a turn rattling damage into that Carnivian until it was dead. And like, if Al Dashley had been there too, it would have been super nasty. Yeah, so maybe then, I should have built him in. So we, we were kind of talking about how that might be like a cool little sniper combo that mm. Mercs can bring because yeah. it is quite a bit of damage. Just something in. that usually is like the Carnivian that like armor 20 with spiny growth up is, is always so annoying to fight. <laughs> so if I can just auto-inflict damage, I'd do it at range to soften it up. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, other than that, like, it was a really fun game. Like, I've I've always really enjoyed the Bokor and Chamblers. Hmm. And I this is the first game where they've actually worked for me. Oh, where, yeah. Where, like, like, a lot of games, they'll get just stomped on. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> well, a, a big issue is the fact that the leader is hmm. a bigger model size than his grunt. So it's not like Alexia where you can screen her with your Risen. So the Bokor is shot in the face yeah, a lot. They, people will be like, <laughs> oh, so all I have to do is kill this one model. And then that unit, kind that of unit is apart. Yeah, shitty. And you can't really defend it. So I'm just going to blast it. But this was one of... So I'm super pumped with... With how uh, oh, and that, that was... and that boat core at the top pulled through so many times. The, you know, the Adrians kept shooting them. He kept being able to either like pass a tough check or like like take it just a little bit of damage and then shunt the rest off onto the sh shamblers yeah. and like he just wouldn't go down and he, and he stayed in the game and just kept churning out masses and masses of shamblers all game. Yeah, I think you went from nine shamblers to one shambler about four times. <laughs> it was just wild. <laughs> So, so that was really cool. It, yeah, that was that was really fun there. Uh, another thing that I did want to mention was at the uh, top or bottom of two, after you hand cannoned my Angelius, I was looking at it and I was like, so my Angelius can probably kill Gordon now. Uh, do you do you mind if I just proxy it out because all I had to do was move like three models? proxy it out see if it would work and then and then we'll play the attrition game which i know you really like to play and mm -hmm. uh, so and you were fine with it and we did it and i rolled double ones on damage one time which saved his life if i had gone for it yeah so gordon but, pulled through but only because you rolled double ones which like we said probably doesn't happen that's complete shithouse luck yeah so like probably you could assassinate it pretty easy like hey, Barring you know rolling snake eyes, means you probably can just go in and nuke him and he's dead. And so like yeah, that would have been a pretty short game. Yeah, it, it would have been a short game. And like I know that you really like the attrition yeah. play. I mean, so, smash my so army. Together. I thought it was super cool that where I was like, okay, I see this assassination run. Can I just proxy it out, roll the dice, and see what happens? And you were like, yeah, sure. And we did it, and we we're like. Okay, he, he survived on these double ones, but, like, on average... And I think I missed an attack, too. Oh, yeah, like you had some <laughs> bad luck on your 
rolls. Which, but, you know, like, when, when you actually go for it, sometimes when, that'll happen. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but, the, but we, we did it and we're like, okay, average dice, he, he should have died. <laughs> which, and, then, and then we played out the game, which I think felt a lot better for oh, yeah. both of us yeah. than just run this it was top a of three. Good reminder for me to, like, I always forget that other factions have good threat ranges. <laughs> and so I'm just like, I'm 12 inches away. What are you going to do? Hit me? And then, yeah, other factions are going, yeah, yeah, we're going to hit you when you're 12 inches away because we can do that. Well, and that, I forget yeah, that. The, the Angelus <laughs> just threatens 12 inches. So you're yeah. like, I walk up and I hand cannon it. And I think, like, if if I didn't have to have cr- uncrippled him, I could have put Ignite on him, which would have, mm. like, really sealed the deal for mm. the assassination run, too. But it was, yeah, just one of those. I, I, I really liked how we played it out, though. Oh, yeah, it was so. super fun for both of us. It was a good time. Yeah, and it was... It lets you feel out, like, your army a little bit better. Mm. Like, I don't... And, and I recommend if you're playing with someone and you see something goofy yeah. like that, where you can just get it and... Like, just ask them if if you only need to proxy out one or two models to make it work, go for it. Like, if you're getting into like five or six it. act activations to, because we weren't it. sure if it was a long shot or if this debt probably should happen on average dice. So we just yeah. tried it out. Like, it should happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a long shot, maybe, yeah. which is good for us to know. Which makes me know now if I if I feel like getting in threat range of an Angelius, I'm gonna be pretty sure I can kill it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or or not not leave a Seraph alive where it can flare yeah. <laughs> your caster. Yeah. Well, also in that turn, like splitting the damage when I shoot I shot up the Angelius and the Seraph. If I had been smarter, I probably should have focused on the one that more guys could reach first and just powered one dead. Oh yeah. But instead, I split damage and hurt both of them yeah so they're still you can still use them they're not dead yet i should have really focused one down probably but that that was one of the biggest points that i wanted to point out during Mm. this game is how we talked about our list before the game yes and we're like okay like do you mind trying something else or whatever and it's like yeah of course like we're here we're both here to have fun and I had a lot of fun. Awesome. And then during the game, we were talking, and it's like, okay, I see something where it might just end the game, but I want to keep playing the game out at the same time. <laughs> and I'm unsure if it will work. Do you mind if I just proxy it out quick? Oh, and uh, your feet turn, actually. It was kind of getting to the start of my turn where you were saying, like, actually, you should have had your feet up last turn. Yeah. Since it only really affects your, what is it? Uh, Callus. Callus and like the spell martyr and forsaken, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and the incubi when they come in, and the incubi but, when they come but it, it doesn't affect like, yeah, it was like it that, was affecting like four models, and you were yeah. like, yeah, I'm fine if that's up, yeah, because why not? <laughs> yeah, it's it because you're already playing a bit rough where it's like not optimized, where <laughs> his feet only affects a couple guys, it's not really what you're looking for normally, so made sense to do, yeah. Um, the only other thing I want to say, I guess, is I love the aesthetic of that map oh. uh, because you were coming in from the ocean side, don't beach, and you had all those aquatic models, oh, yeah. and the gators and the shamblers, and flying so, models, and flying yeah. models. So, like, I love that aesthetic where they're all coming up out of the water, flying over the water, and they're all <laughs> bursting out of the ocean, coming up the beach. I thought that looked really cool yeah. on, on the map. The the merc- the dwarves are able to repel the legion invasion on their island, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Barring an assassination that may or may not have happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was great, though. Other than that, uh, it was a really fun game. Do you have any last parting thoughts? Um, no, like, it was it was definitely neat to see, like, trying to build that concept of having, independent for me, having independent uh, models from Gorton, because I've struggled with Gorton before. Just because he doesn't, at a focus five and a couple upkeeps, he doesn't have enough juice to do much. Well, you were <laughs> saying, like, he has three upkeeps, and if you have them all out, then you have two focus to deal yeah. with? Yeah, and like, it's... what are you going to allocate the, one, the only two focus to a jack? Like, man, it's brutal trying to do anything with Gordon. <laughs> yeah. So I love the idea of just having everything operate independently of him. And it worked out pretty good, except, you know, I didn't have the Super Junior, so I didn't have the massive threat you can have, you can build in that list. But I liked liked the overall feel of it, though. Yeah, for sure. Other than that, thanks for watching Retaliatory Retaliatory Strike. Retaliatory Strike.